Okay, so you understand the core shipping methods and you've likely already got the overall size of the shipment. Now we'll move on to what, when and how to pay your supplier in order to get production started and completed. Let's begin by exploring payment terms. First thing to say about payment terms is that they agreed prior to placing your order. Generally your supplier will dictate these and it'll be up to you to accept them the order and get going with production. You'll generally be required to only pay a deposit. You'll then pay the balance once the order is completed. Now depending on the order size, this may change. It's important to note that deposit and balance amounts are a percentage of the total order. The most common payment terms are 50-50. That is, 50% 50 of the order value is required as a deposit, with the remaining 50% required when production is complete. You'll also see a 30-70 quoted very often, Either of these should be generally expected. Now there are times when the supplier will require 100% of the shipment value. You might assume that this isn't normal practice. However, if the order is particularly small, then it makes economic sense for the supplier to ask for this. The optimal payment terms are 30-70. The reality, however, is that you may not start here, but you'll work towards this with your supplier either over time or you can suggest these terms if you feel that your order isn't particularly small. Therefore, the lower the total order value, the closer to 100% upfront your supplier will require. If the order is less than $1,000, for example, then it's unlikely the supplier will accept anything other than 100% due to the cost of the bank charges alone. So then, how do you actually pay these deposits and balances to your supplier? The first thing that you're going to do before finalizing the order and making any form of payment is to confirm the payment terms that we just discussed. We'll confirm these terms on the purchase order that you created. It's important to take control of this process early on as it shows professionalism and also for you, it's a good thing as it helps you to create a system around your ordering that will keep you organized and make payments for your orders using one of two methods, which are number one, a bank transfer or wire, or as it's sometimes known, a TT for telegraphic transfer, the second method of payment is PayPal. Many suppliers won't accept PayPal, unfortunately. Therefore, the most common payment for the full order, and in many cases the deposit, will be a bank transfer. Now, it is possible to complete the bank transfer payment by either paying via your bank account, or what we actually recommend over and above this is a third-party international exchange using a company such as World First. I discussed this in the previous module and recommended that you take a look at them when sending capital to your suppliers. The reason I recommend this is that it's an efficient way to send money and in many cases, the rates you can achieve here are the best in the market. Now, when making a payment, there are some pieces of information that you require. Let's break them down for you. The first thing you require is a payment date. Next, you require the payment currency that you intend to pay the supplier in. This is usually US dollars. Next, you require the payment amount. The next part is very important. You'll require the beneficiary account name. This will be your supplier's name. Make sure that you list this exactly as the supplier sends it to you. International payments are very sensitive and require that every piece of the information is exact. If this is inputted incorrectly, you'll likely have to get the payment returned after getting stuck in the bank or the third party payment company payment gateway. You require the beneficiary or supplier's address. Again, this must match exactly what the supplier lists it as. Next, list any references such as order or invoice number here. You're going to want to enter the purchase invoice number that the supplier provided so that they can match this up from their side and identify the payment associated with that particular order. Next, you'll require the BIC or SWIFT number associated with your supplier's bank account. This is a reference number that is unique to a particular banking institution. Again, they'll send this to you before you make any payments to them. Finally, as you might expect, you'll require the beneficiary account number that is your supplier's bank account number. When you've made payment, send a copy of the payment via email to the supplier. Typically, you can either take a screenshot of the payment or instead of printing the page, you can save it as a PDF. Now, there are some key things to be aware of when making international payments. Let's dive into them. Firstly, most payments are quoted in US dollars. If you're quoted in any other currency, see if you can be quoted in US dollars. Next, Check your PI or purchase invoice thoroughly, ensuring that units and prices are accurate and the same as the prices that were quoted to you earlier in the process. 
The PI will contain all the required details that we just went through, the BIC or SWIFT payment reference and so on. Next, the bank account name should be the same as the company name. If not, make sure to investigate with your supplier. Finally, ensure that deposit and balance are sent to the same supplier bank account. Once again, if this changes, investigate why and if required, call the supplier by going back to Alibaba or their original communication and locate their phone number. Once the payment has been sent to your supplier, you should confirm receipt of payment with the supplier by emailing and asking them whether or not they've received the funds. This is essentially everything you need to know about making payments. The actual interface you'll use to make a payment really depends on the third party provider or bank that you're using. The process of actually making the payment is pretty simple and straightforward and if you have any issues making the payment using either the bank or for example World First system, simply reach out to them and ask for help.